Alrighty, good folks out there. <clears throat> We're talking Kundalini Awakening. And I want to refer to what I love to call the Bible of Tantra. Tantra Illuminated by Christopher Wallace. Da 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 da. Um, it's epic. It just cuts through the bullshit. If you are on the tantric path, you're on the awakening path, you're on the spiritual path, highly recommend getting this book. Okay, so Kundalini is a Sanskrit term that's first used in a tantric text around the 7th century. Okay, and so when we talk about Kundalini awakening all the time, just by using that word, we're grounding it in the tantric lineages as such. But within the tantric lineage, the word that's used to describe awakening or the beginning of the awakening process as such is Shaktipa, or the descent of grace. Shakti is the goddess, right? Kundalini is a form of the goddess, Kundalini Shakti. So it's all interrelated, interlinked. But in some ways, Shakti part is a more technically accurate form, uh, term, you could say. All right, so let's hear what Christopher Wallace has to say about this because he just nails it, right? The scriptures clarify that the descent of power, Shakti part, what people are often referring to as Kundalini awakening, is not a literal descent of energy from heaven or some higher place, although for some it can feel like that. Rather, it is an awakening of the divine power, Shakti, within you that will lead to your ultimate liberation. Right? It's an awakening of your divine power within you. Uh, and in some ways, a more accurate way to describe it is that we awaken to Shakti, because Shakti is always awake. right? And so Shakti, Kundalini, Kundalini Shakti, it's all talking about the same thing. It's pointing towards the same thing. Us as humans awakening to that. It is in fact more like an ascent than a descent. But the term Shakti part is used both because it is inherited from early Shaiva traditions and because the word Pata, descent, has a connotation of a sudden forceful fall. A startling experience that comes out of the blue, as it were. And how many of you who have had an experience of Kundalini awakening, Shakti part, did it come completely out of the blue, right? Some of you may not even have been practicing any yoga or practicing any meditation, and then boom, Shakti part. <clears throat> Shakti part is unprecedented, a primordial opening to a deeper level of being. That's the essence of it, right? It's like, whoa, there is more here than I thought there was. Furthermore, the language of descent or ascent connotes that the awakening in question is truly a vertical movement because it takes us out of the endless, fruitless, horizontal circling of our normal life, deepening us into our own innate being and opening us to the greater reality. Right? So it's almost as if you're living your life on the vertical, on the surface, da da da, going along, you know, find a partner, make some money, have a good job, da da da, and then boom, all of a sudden the vertical opens up and it's like, whoa, all of this unconscious material down here, whoa, all of this opening to ecstasy up here, right? So it's like that begins to happen. As mentioned above, there comes a moment in the existence of an embodied soul, perhaps after many lifetimes when it is done with the phase of contraction and begins to turn towards its own expansion. And this turning may take place so deep inside your own being that you may not even be aware of it at first. But things that seemed exciting or fulfilling before, like gaining wealth, having lots of friends, getting wasted, making sexual conquests, being praised by others, no longer seems to do it for you. For most, this world weariness is a necessary step in opening to a deeper reality. The longer the gap of time between the subtle inward turn toward expansion and the occurrence of actual Shakti part or initial awakening, the more intensely felt that awakening is. So some people receive a very intense Shakti part consisting often of a mystical experience of their oneness with all of reality or of their true nature as unborn, uncreated, eternal essence or of all reality bathed in a unitary light of compassionate love 
or of energy shooting up their spine and exploding in their head or waves of bliss surging in their body and so on and so on. If you're watching this, put your hand up if the initial awakening was something like that, like some, whoa, ooh, you know. <laughs> Others receive a Shakti part so subtle that it is almost imperceptible. Now, the difference between these two is not that the former person is more blessed, more worthy than the later. It is simply that that person waited longer for the Shakti part, perhaps lifetimes longer, and thus their longing, whether conscious or unconscious, became ever more intense, and thereby when the conditions were right, triggered a more intense awakening. So curious, hey? So curious. It's just like firewood. The longer it dries out, the more quickly and completely it catches fire when a flame comes near. But the awakening is the same in both cases. Fire is fire. So in the sense that it sets a person irrevocably on the path to total integration with divine reality. Let me just read that little piece out again. Shakti part, right? Awakening is that moment where you're set on the path to total integration with divine reality reality whether you like it or not that's what's going to unfold and you can resist and you can want to go back to normal and you can try and figure out how to make it stop but what's going to be happening is eventually you are going to be integrating with divine reality maybe not this lifetime could be another 10 lifetimes down the track uh, no matter the strength of the awakening in terms of your subjective experience of it so you can have a super strong awakening or a very subtle awakening, right? Where all of a sudden you become aware of like, whoa, there's so much more here. Same, same. You are still going to eventually awaken to all that is. The person with the imperceptible Shakti part has their life transformed as a result. But because they didn't wait for it as long to happen, her belief that worldly enjoyments might still fulfill her is stronger. And thus she draws a less intense Shakti part to her. Alrighty. The important thing, however, is that the awakening has occurred. Now, if you have had an imperceptible Shakti part, you might wonder whether it's happened at all. And quite likely, if you're watching this video, you've probably had a louder, more noisy one with more phenomena occurring, right? The most significant thing about it is not the experience but its effect on your life. And this is really important to understand. Kundalini awakening, Shakti part, often has phenomena, experiences that come along with it, right? And this is what he's talking about, these intense kind of experiences. But they are not the thing. The thing is that sense of like, whoa, there is more to life than I thought, and now I am moving towards actual integration of awakening. That's the thing, whether it's accompanied by lots of phenomena, or not a lot of phenomena. And so don't get hooked up on the phenomena. They don't really mean that much as such. You don't have to know what they're all about even. Just let them come, let them go, whatever, no big deal. <laughs> I will briefly describe some signs and symptoms of this awakening. One of the most important signs is subtle, but significant. When you close your eyes, Take some slow, deep breaths and turn your attention within. There is immediately a sense of presence, a kind of sweetness in just being with your inner self. And you can do this. Close your eyes. Take a few breaths. Tune in and just see what you notice. See what you notice. You know, those who have not received Shakti part have little patience for turning within. They don't see the point. They don't sense the divine there. And furthermore, those who have received the descent of power manifest substantial changes in their lives, including some or all of this. I will read these out. There's a bunch, but I think it's useful to, to have a sense. You find worldly forms of fun less satisfying. You're fascinated by spiritual teachings, even if you don't quite understand them. You find yourself drawn to healthier food or otherwise honoring your body. You feel respect and reverence towards spiritual teachers or others on the path. Tears of joy or gratitude well up spontaneously. Your creative capacity is maybe unleashed. Mantras become more effective for you. Yogic practices yield a significant benefit, 
even if they are challenging. And you experience yourself as more vulnerable and sensitive, yet somehow more strong at the same time. You find it harder for a time to relate to friends who have no apparent spiritual sensitivity. That often passes. When you read the words of a great spiritual master, they resonate on a deep level of your being and you get them, even if you can't quite explain them. And when you get quiet and turn within, you feel a subtle presence. The experience of Shakti part, whether it is medium or strong grade, gives a taste of what the final state of liberation is like. It's a temporary immersion, whether for a few moments or days, into our true nature. And from this perspective, you see things as they really are. The one infinite light of consciousness vibrating at different wavelengths in a joyous, interconnected dance. And often it takes the form of experiencing yourself as profoundly connected to the divine in some way. This is a very important point that I'm about to read out, so pay close attention. People who receive a strong Shakti part of this variety often make the mistake of believing that they are now enlightened. That the beginning of the path is in fact the end. And this mistake can be very hard on the person's loved ones and if she or he or they cling to it, it can even bring about a temporary psychotic break that might take some time to heal. It is important to see the value of what you have realized while retaining the humility of realizing that this gift of grace is simply to show the fully expanded state is real and worth striving for but it's not the final attainment otherwise it would be abiding naturally ever refreshing itself with no effort on your part and it would entail the dissolution of your self images and the story of me okay so and that's you know what happened like when i went through shakti part back in but it started in 2000 but 2004 was quite a tense intense experience And yeah, for about four or five days, I was immersed in that. And it was like, there was no me. Whoa. And then it ended and I was fully right back in psych conditioned mind and I was in a psych ward. Um, And exactly as Christopher Wallace says, what it did for me was it gave me a glimpse of how reality can be experienced. And so as a result of that, I doubled down on yoga practice. I doubled down on the spiritual path. I doubled down on studying, on working with teachers, right? So if you have gone through Kundalini Awakening, Shakti part, right? Recognize it is just the beginning. It is just the beginning. It is an invitation to step onto the journey. And in the tantric texts, right? So all of this material is coming from tantric texts. Tantras, a tantra is a tantric text. And there's hundreds of those that have been written from about 5th century AD, or CE, common era, to about the 15th century. Um, I'm just going to go to another piece that I think is really important to look at. And so what Christopher Wallace is sharing here, it's not new age, right? It's not, it's none of that. It's coming from those texts written by the masters and gurus who have been working with these practices and teachings for decades. And had seen and experienced this with their students. All right, so the interesting thing about Shakti Pat as well is that there are nine different stages that are laid out by, I think, Abhinava Gupta and let me have a look. Yeah, in both works that we've been quoting, Tantra Loka and Tantra Sada, Abhinava Gupta outlines nine types of Shakti Pat from the most to the least intense, right? Uh, The strongest grade of Shakti part, which none of you would have experienced, because if you had, you would not be watching this. But the strongest is so powerful, it brings about immediate liberation, a fierce and total awakening with the unfortunate side effect that the intensity of the experience causes the body to drop, i.e. physical death. (laughs) That's the strongest type, right? Needless to say, this is extremely rare. The second grade, also very rare, and probably you did not experience this either, be aware of the part of us that seeks to believe or wants to know that we're special, and so we'll always go for that one. 
The second grade one causes a spontaneous arising of intuitive insight, naturally leading to full awakening without any other assistance necessary. Right? And so this is the recipient of this is said to be a self-revealed guru, a giver of both enjoyment and liberation, displaying the six signs of completion. All right, so in the text, it lays out, it doesn't say it here, but the, what those six signs of completion are, and that's not you. Like, just know that's not you. On the other hand, if the intuitive insight is unsteady or incomplete, then the person will need the scriptures, the tantric text, can't, cannot recommend highly enough going to the actual source, reading the actual text, and a teacher to confirm and strengthen it. And this is much more common. Depending on the steadiness or shakiness of one's intuition, a bit of a says one must perform self-refinement through the sacred vow of disciplined yoga practice, either by himself or as directed by a guru. Now, guru just means teacher within the tantric lineages, right? It means a qualified teacher. Um, and a true teacher is... I'm not, actually, I won't go into that. <laughs> too much detail let's just focus a little bit on here the third grade is much more common and is the weakest grade of shakti part that still permits someone to obtain liberation in this lifetime and it's probably not you either probably isn't you know one who's received it experiences a strong desire to approach a true guru and has the intuition necessary to recognize such a teacher and the recipient of the third grade the burning question what is truth who knows the truth, leads one through intuition or the company of spiritual friends to develop the longing to meet a master. And with this desire is strong enough, says the Gupta, the longing will inevitably be fulfilled. Alrighty, uh, I'm just going to see if he mentions anything about the fourth to sixth. Yeah, the fourth stage of Shakti part leads a person to take initiation because it's still difficult for him to break through his conditioned convictions and mental constructs of reality. Nonetheless, through the gradual ripening of insight through practice, the fourth grade recipient merges with the divine upon leaving the body. That's interesting. This and the following grades account for the majority of people on the path. Right, this and the following grades. That's you, me, us, right? The fifth and sixth grades are received by those ready for the spiritual life, but who also have a strong desire for worldly enjoyment and prosperity. They thus seek and find a teacher who can support them in both endeavors. Remembering in the tantric traditions, it's not just about awakening and liberation. It's also about enjoyment of life, and that enjoyment includes prosperity, being able to um, support your family in a beneficial way. The th Okay, did it. They practice a yoga that leads them to enjoyment and then to liberation at the time of leaving the body or shortly after. The three lowest grades of Shakti part are received by one whose desire for enjoyment is greater than their desire for liberation. So that's a really good litmus test. It's like, would you rather enjoy life or would you rather liberate? You see? Um, and those grades of awakening grant access to the path to enjoyment through yoga accumulating in liberation in a future life okay so nine grades of shakti part none of us are, are definitely not the first and unlikely to be e even the second and the third most people watching this video will be the fourth fifth and sixth right um, and why that is useful is because when you understand where you are then you know what to seek or what it is that you need and if Shakti part has happened to you and you don't really care about liberation but you want to focus on enjoyment of life still, then it's really good to know that because then what you want to do is focus on diminishing suffering because that leads to more enjoyment of life. And it will lead to more liberation as well. But liberation isn't the ultimate thing for you necessarily. For me, I'm just, I want to liberate. Definitely down with enjoyment of life as well. And also, like, to just have such a profound sense of the temporary nature of things and that the ultimate enjoyment comes about through liberation. Um, all right, this is getting quite long. Do, 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 do. Don't want to add anything else from here. No, I think we'll end it there. So key takeaway and points here is to understand if you have experienced kundalini awakening, what the tantric lineages call shakti part, 
the best place I have found to make sense of it, to find the context for it, and to find the map for navigating has been in the tantric lineages. And some of the best teachers I've found to work with are Krista Wallace, freaking amazing, right? Because he's got he's a scholar, practitioner, he has a podcast, and I found his teachings to be so clear that they've just really helped me stay on track in terms of like what is going on, what's needed here. And it's just helped me understand the difference between awakening, which is when you shift from identification with the story of me to knowing yourself as all that is, liberation, which is the dissolving of conditioning, attachments and aversions that keep you stuck in suffering, and enjoyment of life. You know, being able to enjoy a hot cross bun and a hot chocolate and a sunrise and a sunset, you see. And so recognizing that those three things are always working together it's really important. So any questions, drop them down below. You can find me in Shelter, which is the online community that I am co-creating on school. And yes, I do work with people that are going through Kundalini, Kundalini Awakenings and would like a mentor or guide to support them through that process. So just reach out. So many blessings to you all. Blessings to Christopher Wallace and all the teachings that he shares and blessings on the goddess.